All right, now we for, for ugh, gosh, I can't talk today. You're getting it from me. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Michael. I'm Erica. Today we're going to talk about the games that are on the Nintendo Switch Online service that were originally published in 1992. If you look at the information actually on any of these games on the Switch, some of them have different release dates but that's just because they were released in the U.S. at a different time. I'm looking at their initial release, whether that's in the U.S. or not. So first up, we've got the only NES game on the list, which is Fire and Ice, also known as Solomon's Key 2. This game is a puzzle game where you play as a little magician named Dana that has to put out fires using blocks of ice and a wand that has ice powers. I'm just gonna say for the record that I'm gonna have to insist that all of my video games from here on out have a cute polar bear at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of the things that I thought was interesting about this game is that it's a simple puzzle game on the NES, but now as we're getting toward the end of the NES's lifespan, even the simple puzzle games have cute graphics to them. And the music in this is actually pretty cute too. I do think that this game doesn't necessarily hold up to a lot of play. Like I got tired of it pretty quickly. I basically got stuck at one point and then didn't have any interest in playing anymore, but your results may vary. Okay, next on our list, we've got Brawl Brothers. So now moving on to the Super Nintendo, we've got Brawl Brothers. Brawl Brothers is a side-scrolling beat-em-up where you get to choose between five impossibly beefy people and beat up all the dudes that come in your way, just like a Double Dragon or Battletoads type game. I remember always struggling with a lot of the street fighting games because you want to really do well with each character and play to their strengths, but it was hard to know up front what those were. The graphics in this are really nice though. Um, the difficulty is about on par with most other beat-em-ups. And one thing that I think is interesting is that the characters are fairly large on the screen compared to a lot of beat-em-ups. Mm -hmm. So you're taking up more screen real estate. Next for the Super Nintendo, we've got Doomsday Warrior. And it's a fighting game and I suck at fighting games. This one also does feel kind of clunky. When I was trying to play through this, I was doing all the typical things you do, like quarter circles on the D-pad and then a button. I couldn't get any of my character's special moves to happen. And even things like trying to jump feels awkward in this game. Even from what I saw, I don't think it was just you. I think it was kind of clunky controls on the game. You know, there's a reason these things don't take off. We've never really heard of this one and that's why. <laughs> yeah. Next for the Super Nintendo is Psycho Dream, which is a side-scrolling action game. You get to choose between two characters and fight aliens. This actually feels really good to play, and the graphics and the music are really cool in this one. Holy whole tone scales, Batman! <laughs> yeah. The two characters that you can choose between play pretty differently, and it's fun to see what the power-ups do to them and to their weapons as you get further on. Going from a melee weapon with a pretty short range to shooting projectiles all over the place on the screen, it's pretty fun. This is one that I would recommend people give a shot. Next, for the Super Nintendo, we've got Super Mario Kart. Zoom! Yay! <laughs> it's a classic, and it's maybe not the most exciting of the Mario Kart games. It's not technically the most interesting of the games, but I still really love this game and it's fun to see where the whole series comes from. And it's the OG, you know, this is the one that we would play for hours and hours when you're homesick. You know, you'd watch The Price is Right and then you would go play Mario Kart for several hours and then pass out yep. from fever. Exactly. Now we're moving on to the Sega Genesis with Alicia Dragoon. This opening feels very similar to Legend of Dragoon, so I'm kind of wondering if Legend of Dragoon was intentionally inspired by Alicia Dragoon. The story is very to the point, but it's a little tough to figure out how to play. I eventually got there, but it's a side-scrolling action game where you play as a dragoon and you've got little dragon friends that follow you around and attack with you and have their own health bars and you can switch between them and some of the designs are pretty cute. I actually enjoyed watching you play this one like from, just from a visual only standpoint because I wasn't actually playing but it's nice to see so much happening on the screen but that said there was almost too much. It was hard to know where your priority was of which enemies do you really need to spend time really destroying and which can you just sneak past. Mm -hmm. Also on the Genesis, we've got Echo the Dolphin. Yay! This game is so pretty and it sounds really trippy and 
cool. It gives me a little bit of motion sickness to play it. Everyone talks about how difficult this game is, especially as you get further in. I wasn't able to get very far. I got stuck fairly early both times I played it. So I think this game just might be a little bit too difficult and dense for me. It was so beautiful to watch though. Like the graphics on it are really impressive and I couldn't hear the music on it, but you can tell that they put a lot of thought and care into the atmosphere of the game. And even though you did, you know, drown, <laughs> poor Echo, it was fun to see like, there are a lot of possibilities with this world. How far can we get? Oh, apparently not very far. <laughs> not this time. Maybe later. Well, if you're good at the game, you eventually get to outer space. I think. Really? I, I think I think the boss of the game is like all the enemies are aliens. Eventually, I, I can't remember for sure. Dolphins in space. <laughs> Next for the Sega Genesis, we've got Kid Chameleon. This is another action platformer where you play as a totally cool kid who gets trapped in a video game and transforms into different heroes to fight baddies and whatnot. It's another really good looking game, but this one is pretty slow paced and difficult. I got stuck in this one again pretty early, but I like a lot of the little graphic touches, like the way he walks downhill by leaning back and taking short little steps. Yeah, there was a lot of gravity to this one, and I think that's why it was slow-paced, because I appreciated that too, and it was fun to watch, but it was also like, there were a lot of like really detailed graphics, like the little helmet that he had on with his with his feather, and, and you know, the dragons kill you in this one, they're not fighting <laughs> with you, but it was fun and enjoyable and more realistic looking than some of the earlier games. Next for the Sega Genesis, we've got Landstalker, which is an isometric, platforming adventure action RPG. It feels pretty awful to play on the Switch at least. I don't know if it felt that bad on Genesis, but it doesn't feel nice. The graphics are a little goofy, like he looks like he's a Roblox character or something like that. The translation's not great and there's a lot of talking. The design is just fine, but the music isn't really that great either. I did like the fact that it was more of a puzzle RPG than battle-based, but it makes it a little dull just for the observer. I always look at video games for from an observer's perspective because I watch people play so frequently throughout my personal life. I just have a lot of gamers and I love that stuff. So I look for that interest too. It should be good to look at as well as to play. And this one was just, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of dialogue at the beginning of this game. It feels like it takes forever before you actually get to start playing. And I don't really care about anything that's happening. So <laughs> next for the Genesis, Shining Force, the original Shining Force game. I made a video review of this a while back, so I'll link to that up in the corner. It's not my favorite. I already don't really love tactical RPGs, but there are some that I do love. Like I love everything in the Ogre Battle franchise and I love Fire Emblem Three Houses, so I'm sure I would love other Fire Emblem games. I love Final Fantasy Tactics, but beyond that, I haven't really found much that I really love when it comes to tactical RPGs, and this is definitely not one of them. Yeah, you can see my review for the full account, but it's awkward to play because you use just the A button to do every single action, so every time you press A, you have to bring up a menu to choose what you want to do. There's so little music in the game, so you hear the same thing repeating over and over, and it's not really great music either, so it's pretty obnoxious. But the graphics do look pretty nice. Next up on the list is one of the few that I wish I was playing instead of Michael, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And I could just feel the controls in my hand wanting to go, no, don't go up there, go up, down there. I always loved the gameplay of this one just a little bit more than the original Sonic. Not that the original Sonic wasn't amazing, it was, but the, this one would just, you could do a little bit more and it was, it was just a little more like the hands-on action of it, like the way you could get yourself spinning and do various things just was a lot more satisfying to play. And the graphics and music obviously improved with time, but I think that they added something really special in Sonic 2 that uh, they, they never really got back to after that with all the other iterations of Sonic that would come after this. Yeah, I think the obvious standout difference in Sonic 2 is the spin dash. It really, as you were saying, opens up a lot of options for you. But then it all, this game also adds Tails, and because he's not in the first game, is he? Nope. Yeah, th this game adds Tails and he's adorable. Everybody's like, why is this dude following me? It's like, because he's cute and he's slightly helpful occasionally. What's the bonus game like in Sonic 2? That's the that's that's the 3D one where you're running down a corridor. Yeah, that's that was also a lot of fun. And you know, the bonus games in Sonic have always been good and the you know the originals were fun, but this one was was just very different. You had to really navigate a tunnel, and if you didn't do it right the first time, it was like, nope, you're done. Well the bonus game in the first Sonic always made me sick, so <laughs> I, I like the one in Sonic 2 much more. Yeah. Motion sickness was never my issue, so I loved that one too, but this was just very different. So next we've got Street Fighter 2, the special champion edition 
on Genesis. And, you know, it's, everyone knows Street Fighter, and it's one of the two pillars of fighting games for a reason. From what I understand, what made Street Fighter 2 turbo different is that it actually moves faster than any fighting games before it. So then, with Street Fighter 2 Turbo, most 2D fighting games have that faster speed because suddenly everyone wants that. So this version that's on the Nintendo Switch Online Genesis console is not Turbo, but it's one of the ones that came after Turbo that I think has the speed of Turbo, if I'm not mistaken. You've got a lot of characters to play from from the beginning, and that makes it fun. Street Fighter was always a reliable option in the arcades or Chuck E. Cheese or wherever you happen to be. You usually find some kind of Street Fighter there, and, you know, it's hard to kind of distinguish in memory which Street Fighter is which, mm -hmm. but they're all pretty solid choices, and you can usually count on gameplay at whatever speed being familiar and relatable. As you are probably noticing, from the gameplay footage that you're watching right now. I am very bad at this game, as I am at all fighting games, but I do like the little touch of being able to like destroy a car for whatever reason in between fights sometimes. <laughs> okay, the last game for the Sega Genesis that we have is Super Fantasy Zone. It is a side-scrolling shmup shoot 'em up where you play a little bug-sized ship that is destroying flowers and other bugs. And it's pretty cool, and it's so cute. I love the graphics and the design of this game. The music is really fun too. I'm bad at this game, it's difficult, but it feels very fair. It doesn't feel like it's just like throwing way too much at you. The premise of this game, just at initial viewing, is definitely one of the ones where the system and the designers were definitely trying to appeal more to females. Not more to females, but bring more females into video gaming. This is definitely that kind of time where they were starting to do that more. But the game is challenging and beautifully designed, so it's kind of hard to fault them for that. Mm -hmm. And very last, we have the one game from the Game Boy from this year, and that is Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins. It was a very, very old favorite of mine. It's one of the first things I owned on my Game Boy, and I loved every second of it. Yeah, we've already discussed this one at length, so check that out in the... There's a link in the description if you want to read more about it. It's a fun game, and it still holds up today. So that's all the games that we wanted to cover. Those are all the games that, as of today, are on the Switch Virtual Console from 1992. Which of these do you think is the most interesting? Which one should people check out first? Or one or two or three? Well, if you're not already familiar with the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise, this is a solid choice for your first endeavor into that world. Six Golden Coins is a really good introduction to any Game Boy platforms that you want to look into, but it's also just a very solid game in its own right. You should play Echo the Dolphin just because everybody should look at how visually stunning the game is. Is. Then just to round that out, jump into Street Fighter or one of the other fighting games just to look at what we're talking about in terms of tactile control and see how you kind of fall into that realm. Again, assuming you've never played any of these games before. But I would definitely choose Street Fighter over Doomsday Warrior. Oh yeah. <laughs> of, of those two fighting games, yeah. Yeah. But I think the one side-scroller that I would recommend everyone check out is Psycho Dream. That one is really pretty and it feels good to play. Also Mario Kart obviously is something that everyone should check out. And if you are looking for a shmup, the one from 92 is pretty fun. Fantasy Zone is a good time. Well that's it for everything today. Thanks for joining everybody. Maintain your groovy selves. Bye.